Hey you guys, how are you? Um, today I thought I'd do something different and I'm going to teach you guys how to paint a portrait. Um, I'm sort of self-taught as an artist so I'm going to teach you my way how to do it. I'm sure there's other ways um, but I uh, will show you a way where you don't have to be an artist to be able to achieve a portrait. I mean, you could sit there for hours sketching someone, trying to get it right, all the little details. I mean, I could do it. It would take longer to do it that way. Or you could do it the easy way, the way I do it. And the system I um, use is called mapping. Uh, so I'll get into that and I'll show you guys how to do it. So um, you don't have to have an arts degree. You don't have to uh, have any real experience. Um, I mean, obviously you have to have uh, a keen eye and you have to, you know, sort of pick up a bit of technique as you go, shading, that kind of thing. I don't have a lot of surfaces to paint on. Um, obviously everything that I paint for customers goes out the door as soon as it's done. So I don't have anything to sort of hang on to or, uh, I mean, I've really got to start doing more display pieces that I can sort of stick on the wall here and there. Um, so what I've done is I found a couple of old guards off a car that I used to own sitting around. So uh, just a sec. All right, as you can see, these are off an old, uh, I think it was a VN Commodore Calais. Um, they were just sitting around doing nothing. And they're not in a really bad shape, but they're also not in really good shape. Um, I mean, I notice there's a little dimple sort of about there on one of them. Um, but for today, they're basically just display pieces, so it doesn't really matter. If I was going for a, a better finish, obviously I'd take more time. I would um, go over the guards and make sure there were no shitty bits on them. So I'll put a layer of um, high fill primer on it and the next step I'm gonna pick a color out I don't I don't know what color yet probably black that seems the easiest bit of base coat and I'll um, throw a bit of black on it I'll rub this back by hand first it's a high fill primer so I'll give it a bit of a, a sand and get it smooth so once I've got these all prepped up and ready I'm going to show you the technique for painting portraits, so stick with me. Well, the primer's dry, and as you can see, I've got the sander out. I'm just going over the whole thing. It's uh, there was a few scratches, and um, I sanded down the uh, the guard yesterday and put the um, primer on it, the high fill primer, and it's filled a few little scratches and things, so it's come up nice and smooth. There's only one bit which is kind of down here, which really I would cut out and weld if I was going to put it on a car. But I've um, cleaned it up and primed it anyway. Won't matter. These are just going to be display guards. This one, I've got one sitting there. So I'm going to rub those back, and uh, I'm thinking of doing the artwork right there. That's my canvas. And I was looking at my paints I had sitting around. Um, and I came up with these two. I don't know if I'm going to use them or not, but uh, I never use them. With airbrushing, you know, you just don't use metallics really. So it's just leftover bits of paint that I had sitting around. So maybe I could use one of those or mix them together. I don't know. Anyway, we'll get this done and. Uh, or we'll chuck some paint on it. Now I've put a little bit of um, red paint on it. There's a couple of bits which are uh, a bit rough due to the panel. As you can see there, there's a dent. Uh, and there's a few scratches and that, that have come through. One little bit has um, reacted. It's fried. So it means there's a material underneath that doesn't agree which is nothing, I'll, uh, I'll spot it up. I wasn't going for um, perfection or 
not putting these guards on anything so um, basically I just put a bit of paint on to uh, give me a canvas to practice you know my airbrushing for a video um, so you know did its job anyway that's the main thing I'll wait till it dries and I'll correct the bits that are not that good I'm thinking of doing a little bit of graphics as well and then I'll do round about here I'll do a bit of artwork and on that one round about there I'm also uh, just looking at maybe doing this one soon this one I'm currently doing which is unfinished it's up there I've done uh, little patches of primer and um, made it look a bit rough I might put a few bullet holes in it a little bit of airbrushing so that's one I started a while back I've got to finish and I'm thinking of doing this one soon and also one of these trucks I don't know how good the light is So Kenworth and Peterbilt. And I'm thinking of doing uh, like a real Mad Max wasteland sort of thing on all of them. So uh, my well, I ended up making my Dodge Challenger model that I showed you, and uh, I've made these cars to look like um, kind of wasteland cars covered in dirt, dust, a bit rusty. I uh, have to put dents in them. I'm thinking of putting bullet holes and dents in all of them. But anyway, so there's the Trio, the Charger. I've got that covered in dirt. I've got um, little patches of primer on it here and there. And I've got a really sort of scratched up paint job. And that's the other side. And of course I've got the charger and the charger in the background and that's um, same deal. I uh, cut the exhaust and put it out the side. Got primer, patches of primer. Oops. I'm trying to break my models already. And uh, I've added a few little spikes in the front and a bit of netting in the window made it look all beat up and weather beaten and uh, like it's been in the desert and down uh, dirt roads so that's that one that's the Challenger and last but not least I got the 50 I love the uh, Tri-5 cars 57, 55, 56 anyway this is mine and uh, I've roughed it up a fair bit, cut the hole in the bonnet like someone's sort of hacked the bonnet out to, or hood as you'd say in America, to uh, accommodate the air cleaner. But the reason I actually did that too is I lowered this. It was sitting up ridiculously high, so I did some mods underneath to lower the thing. And of course the motor doesn't fit as well, so I've had to sort of... Um, you know cut a piece out and so it's not sitting in the right spot but you know you don't notice at first glance and added some um like a choo-choo train steam train the um like metal things at the front so it can uh, come up behind other cars and um so do a bit of damage hopefully anyway um so that's the 57 i've made it look rough i've made it look like it's been in the desert and made the chrome look not so shiny and perfect there's still things i want to do i want to get more cars and other models but i want to put machine guns on them and spikes and so i'm not finished but and of course the trucks in the background they're going to be the same I'm going to rough them up make them look like they've uh they're off the movie set of mad max or they've been in the desert for years and years and um, after I've done a reasonable selection of cars, I want to uh, make a, a few dioramas for them.
haven't made dioramas before. I've been watching a few videos, so I've got a few ideas. I was going to try and um, do a mock diorama outside with the uh, sticks and weeds and dirt and everything, but the uh, chooks wouldn't let me. They came up to uh, see what I was doing. So anyway, that's that for now. Um, so I'll get back to the video and I want to show you how to do portraits. Oh, and I almost forgot. I started on this one and it is, oh shit, what is it? Um, looking at the box, it's a 66 Oldsmobile. Uh, and while I was spraying the guards the other day, I had a little bit of the color in the gun. So I just uh, splashed it on the this here. But it looks a bit clean. I mean, I do in real life. I prefer, I'm, I'm not a fan of the patinaed look. I know a lot of people are. I like a car to look you know, a million dollars sort of thing. Um, but I, I do like the colour, but I want to rough this up and, you know, dent it and scratch it up. And I have all the parts, which normally what I do when I'm building a kit, as you can see, I've done the, the hood, bonnet, as we would say. Um, there's the, the bottom and all the bits and pieces there. So I've got to go through all that when I've got time and um, airbrush all the bits on the frames. So um, airbrushing is great. Sometimes it's good if you're going for the, the rough look. It, sorry, my fingers are annoying. It's good to use a paintbrush and um, you can even sprinkle a bit of dirt in it before it's um, or dust before it's completely dried. And uh, so the next one, 66 Olds. I'll keep you updated on that one. Well, there you go. That's my bike back together. Just needs a little bit of a clean. See with the shroud back on the um, tank you can see I lost a little bit of the guy's gun but not too bad looks good got to do up those two bolts on the shroud I just gave it a, a quick wipe over but it really does need a good clean and I've got to put the uh, license plate back on it So the old girl looks a bit better, a bit brighter. I feel pretty uh, contented with that. Anyway, just thought I'd show you. So what I've done, I've gone ahead and stuck this guard up on the table. You know, we've got a couple of old tins I've just got propped up, sort of holding it up in the right position. Hopefully it's not going to fall over. Um, today I'm just going to do black and white. So uh, we'll get into um, doing colours later on. And as you can see, if I can squeeze in here, I've got a few pictures that I had already. I haven't printed anything new off, so I found these in the drawer and I thought, okay, I've done pictures, portraits of these guys before. Got Biggie Smalls. The Indian Larry at the top, famous uh, custom Harley builder in New York. And of course, Johnny Cash. Who doesn't love a good Johnny Cash painting? Um, so, the uh, technique I'm going to use today is a technique I call mapping. And uh, I don't know what other people call it. I don't know what other people use or do. This is my technique, it works for me. I've done it plenty of times and always get good results. So um, I've got my pictures there. Now, what you've got to do is um, when you're gonna do your portrait, like I showed you, I've got the guard here ready to go in the right position. 
So you need to, go, if you've got access to your own printer, if not, go to the library. I used to go to the library, it's cheaper to print out, saves buying cartridges, just print out whatever pictures you need. Um, so what you need to do is to work out scale. So um, the scale of the person you want to do a portrait of, um, you need to print that out on A4, whatever the size is. Um, so I'll show you here with these pictures. So, for example, let's see, we'll do Indian Larry. We'll do Indian Larry. So if you're happy with the scale of that, hypothetically we've gone to the library or used your printer and you printed it out, that's the scale you want. Depending if you're doing it on a motorcycle tank, on a uh, computer tower, or on the you know panel of your car. So we'll just hypothetically, okay, this is the scale we want. Print it out to the size you want. Make sure when you print your pictures out, that you print plenty of reference pictures and what I mean by that is do multiple copies of this so what we're going to do with mapping is we're going to let's put that down get a scalpel we're going to scalpel out all the dark bits all the black all the darker shades because what we want to do is we want to get the exact shape of the eye edge of the nose, the nostrils, and all the facial features. Sorry, the camera's pointing down. All the facial features like that, um, the hairline, uh, where the eyes sit, the ears, even the mouth, the corners of the mouth, the shape of the mouth. So you're going to get the scalpel. You don't have to take all of the... Uh, blackout but you just want to take enough to give you or as I say to map out the shapes of the area that you you want to paint because what's going to happen is when we scalpel out all the dark pieces it'll map out the features of his face and then what we're going to do I've got the guard here and we're going to lay it down on the guard where we want it to sit and we're going to place it in the right spot so just give us two seconds so these little things here you can use any sort of magnets but I like these ones and they are not too strong they don't stick too hard to the panel so basically you know it's not going to um, be too hard to pull off the panel you don't want that um, so I've got lots of these different shapes, so I'll stick this on the panel. It's a bit hard to hold the camera and hold the, uh, the bit of paper, so give us two seconds. Anyway, as I was saying before, the compressor uh, rudely cut in. When you work out where you want uh, the picture, you can make a little discrete, a few little points or marks somewhere with a pencil or something. Then what we're going to do, we're going to take it back off and we're going to scalpel out all the dark bits. Alright, so what we're going to do, as I said, we're going to scalpel out all of the darker bits here. Eyebrows, you know, the shape of his face, his chin, you know, around his hairline, his mouth, the corners of his mouth. So we're basically going to map out his features were all by using all the dark bits and that's uh, where we're going to airbrush we're going to first airbrush all of the dark bits that we've cut out so I'll start Right, as you can see, we've got um, all the edges cut out. We don't have to cut all the black out, like I said. That's why I call it mapping. What you're mapping is 
you're uh, getting the corners of the eyes, the shape of the nose, the nostrils, the mouth, the lines, you know, like significant parts that define a person's um, character, their face. I've decided I'm leaving the tattoo on his neck, the lettering to last, I'll do that by hand, and the chain, because if I cut too much out, um, it's just going to complicate things at the moment. I just want to show you um, basically, you know, the bits I've cut out, how to map it out, how to get it down on your panel. And from there, um, we can start filling in all the, the shading and everything. So I'm going to do blacks, whites and greys and uh, keep it as a black and white, like the picture's black and white anyway. All right, let's get started. So, like I said before, we've worked out basically where we're going to put the portrait and we're going to have it in this area. I don't have to be spot on. If it was like a motorbike tank or somewhere and they, the, the customer wanted it in a certain spot, of course you'd be a, a little bit more fussy in positioning it and getting it in the right spot. But um, the first thing I do uh, is I normally spray a little bit of white in the area. So I'm going to give it a, a light dusting of white. It doesn't have to be too dark because we're going to do a lot of shading. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier to um, to uh, see the outlines, the, the black outlines. So give me two seconds. As I said before, these panels, there's, you know, little um, dents and and bits, folds and things, so the whole panel's not perfect. It's basically just a canvas for me to work on and uh, demonstrate doing a portrait. So a little dusting of white. Don't be too fussy. It's basically just to give you a little bit of a white background to work on. Now if you're working on a uh, expensive paint job, someone who's um, a little bit more fussy with uh, the outcome of the art. Of course you would mask this area just so you don't get any uh, overspray. I mean fortunately these don't kick up a lot of overspray but it's always good to be uh, a bit over careful than being careless. There's nothing worse than having to fix something when you've made a boo-boo. It's easier just to try and get it right from the start. So, as I showed you before, we uh, will place it on the panel roughly where we want it. I'm happy putting it there like that. It looks relatively straight. Then get your magnets. Start placing your magnets around so it stops the paper from flapping around, basically. Lots of magnets, why not? And I've even got little magnets, so for that bit that I cut out by his eye, I said I didn't want it to flap around while I've got a little tiny magnet there. Sometimes the little ones are handy. Uh, put that one on the nose. It's, it's easy to lose the magnets too. You've got to keep your eye on where you put them. So I'll have a shot with that. 
Next is the black. So I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit. So what we're going to do, we're going to do it lightly, not too dark. Yep. Sorry. Sorry, compressor's got no manners. So what we're going to do, you don't want to hit this too hard with black. You just want to basically um, do a little bit of a, a light, sort of a, a spray. Some areas you can go a little bit darker, like nostrils. And most importantly, make sure when you print out your pictures, do multiple copies or at least have another reference picture on your phone. Because as you can see when you're spraying it, it's going to be hard to look at this piece of uh, or paper picture of Indian Larry with all the black overspray on it and I really want to have a look at all the details on his face so it's always better to have reference pictures you can look at when you're doing your artwork I apologise if I don't explain things 100% um, clearly. I try and pick the, the right words, but uh, sometimes when you're trying to focus on something and you, you're gas bagging, you tend to uh, find it hard to pull the right words out of your hat. I'm sure you understand what I mean anyway. So be thorough, take your time and make sure you pick over and go over all the little bits, make sure you haven't uh, missed anything. I mean if you have missed anything you can always put the piece of paper back on, line it up, get the right spot and you know, do the bit that you missed, but I think we're doing pretty good. I think you can get your magnets at um, you know, kitchen shops, craft stores. Uh, I go to craft stores and uh, pick them up there. They're pretty cheap. And I just buy a bundle of them, a few packs. It's always good to have different shapes and uh, sizes, but anyway. So there you go. So we have mapped out Indian Larry based off the picture I printed out. And, sorry. See, I'm working off a uh, picture on my phone. I'm trying to hold it straight. There you go. So I'm going to use that as my reference picture today. <clears throat> so when you're shading, you know, come in uh, fairly light, don't be too heavy handed, I mean you can go over and over the beautiful thing about airbrushing is if you um, make a mistake you can always come back and correct it and if you use these stencils like that course they uh, take a bit of the pain out of trying to get uh, nice clean edges mm. so it's basically like join the dots a lot of it
what I'm doing here is, as you can see, uh, I've got my reference picture. I often work off my phone. See, what I'm doing, I'm going over, I'm looking at it, I'm going all the shaded parts, the grey, the different shades, and I'm going over and I'm imitating or copying the, um, the same effect using uh, the black. And of course, I've got white underneath, um, which is a good base, and um, it's good. The red hair will actually give it a... Uh, kind of a nice sort of almost a flesh tone pinky sort of a color um, the main thing is is uh, have a shot of it yourself you know I'm not the world's authority or expert on airbrushing and airbrushing techniques but what I do works for me and I've been doing it for years I've been uh, painting Harley Davidsons and cars and other things. Oops, sorry, I just bumped the camera, excuse me. And you'll notice with the airbrush, the closer in you are, the sharper the edges, and you've got your trigger. The further back, the more paint will flow out, so you'll get thicker lines, you'll get uh, darker lines. Whereas the more forward, the more gentle the air pressure, the finer and softer. So when I'm shading, I'm doing nice uh, soft bits. Like um, if I do the cheekbone, I'm gonna just a very slight bit of pressure. Like I said, if you don't get it correct, the first time come back and uh, and correct it so um, I, I uh, go between black and white and and I also often mix different shades of grey to achieve different um, effects with the shading if it's color and it's a color photo of course you'd go okay what skin tones you know with skin often you get reds, blues, pinks, um, no one's completely white, but you use white for your, your highlights and, um, you know, brown, tan, whatever colours, you know, you have a look and observe all the colours. Mix a, a different selection of colours. I use these little glass pots. You could use anything that will hold the paint. Pots and I'll mix uh, a number of different shades it's always good to have different shades and while you're doing it you might want to um, mix a couple together you might want to um, tone one down dull it down a bit you know just be creative just use your imagination use your eye and uh, there's no real rule book just uh, have fun doing it that's the thing enjoy it you know
And the funny story is, the guy that I, uh, I do a lot of my art for, um, he, he builds, uh, his name's Coops. Um, I do a lot of uh, Harleys for him. He builds Harleys, custom Harleys, services. He um, does all the mechanical. Um, he does some amazing bikes. Um, you just walk in and you draw. You know, he's a very talented guy. A uh, funny story is how I met him is um, I was, uh, when I used to be a drinker, I was um, up at the workshop one day and we're having a few beers and uh, my friend said, uh, hey, uh, do a burnout on your Harley. So I did. And um, like a silly bastard, I burnt out the clutch. So I uh, called around and I, um, that's how anyway, I discovered um, Yeah, long story short, uh, I met my uh, friend, the one I do all the uh, work, uh, Harley Davidson's, um, through burning out my clutch. It was um, quite funny. And, uh, but at least I admitted that I, uh, I buggered the clutch by doing a burnout. He knew anyway. He had a laugh. And uh, yeah, just told him I was uh, airbrushing and um, he liked my work and we kind of went from there and I've been um, doing bikes for him for quite a while now.
Yeah, the eyes, I think. The eyes, a little bit of shading and detail. I'll probably go over it quite a bit. But, uh, you know, that was one sitting, so that's not too bad. So there you go. How to do portraits. Well, that's part one. I uh, hope it was helpful for you. So um, I wanted to basically just give you a technique that, that you can use to uh, do portraits. Um, but as I said, don't expect um, to be uh, perfect, 100% perfect the first time you try it. Um, do it, practice. Probably the hardest thing, not hardest really. Um, what's a better way of putting it? Shading. Shading is the biggest thing that you really have to uh, nail and um, it's, it's not that hard really. It's uh, just a matter of having a keen eye, observing and um, not being too heavy handed. Be patient with yourself. But um, uh, another thing I want to say too is um, my channel, it's not just airbrushing. Um, Admittedly, it's the most popular part of my channel. A lot of people like to see airbrushing, but I do intend doing a lot of um, doing, uh, paranormal exploration, and I do enjoy doing the paranormal side and going to other places of interest too. You know, I'm, I'm car mad. I love fixing cars. I love um, restoring cars, bikes, um, making model kit sets, as you've seen on this video. Um, but if there's any other urban explorers out there that uh, want to give me a ahoy and um, invite me along, please do. Um, I'm going to be doing some of those sort of videos myself. Same with the paranormal stuff. If there's anyone doing paranormal investigations and you want me to tag along or me and my friend Graham, um, we've done a few. Uh, I've only added, I think, two so far on my channel, but I'm very keen to do that. Um, very keen to collaborate with uh, car painters, hot rod enthusiasts, um, whatever. If you want to um, put your face on the screen and um, or do a collaboration with me, write something in the comments below or email me. My details are there. If someone wants to correspond, my post box is in there as well. Um, I'm always happy to talk to people, happy to give you any tips or information you want if you want to learn how to uh, airbrush or paint. Um, I don't claim to be the, the expert, someone who knows everything, it's not the case, but uh, what I do works for me and um, you know it'll work for you too. So you've just got to work on your own technique and, uh, and apply yourself, that's it. So anyway, enough of me gas bagging. But I'm going to ask as usual if you could give me a thumbs up, please. I'd really appreciate it. Always appreciate it. And uh, if you want to hit the subscribe button also below and there's a bell icon. Uh, as soon as I do another video, um, you'll know. So uh, I'll shut the back up now and, uh, and see you next time. Part two next time. Ciao.